Tom here from Learn Systems, and we're going to talk about the open source tools I use for accounting. Now, a couple caveats here. I'm not an accountant. I'm not your accountant. And no good legal defense starts with this person on YouTube said. Whatever jurisdictions, whatever the laws are, wherever your business resides, please comply with them and consult a tax professional. I'm not even giving out any tax advice, but I just feel some people may want to start going with this person said. All I'm really talking about is the tools and the process and how we hand it off to our accounting firm, a professional services company that we use to actually file all of these taxes. But, you know, the tools are still relevant. So if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a share project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there are some affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts for products and services that we talk about on this channel. And we're going to talk about accounting. I know it's boring, right? But there's been this question come up. How do you live without QuickBooks? It is the quintessential, most important program so many small businesses do rely on. Well, there's processes by which you can not use QuickBooks. And there's a couple of them that I have right here that I'm going to talk about. First one is Invoice Ninja. I have a full in-depth review of how we use Invoice Ninja, the software. It's open source. It's amazing. It's free. I really like it. I, we have all of our invoices and everything there. But Invoice Ninja is not the end all to our accounting process. While it is able to send out invoices and collect payments for our clients and keep track of all the money owed to us, there's other revenues that come into this company that we need to track. And some of them, and if I've talked openly about this, is we make money off the YouTube channel. So that's our AdSense revenue, affiliate commission, and then other revenues. Other revenues include almost anything as a business. And what I mean by that is like, well, rebate checks that may come in for products we bought, any type of interest that comes in off of money sitting in the bank, whatever those other revenues are, there are all kinds of miscellaneous categories. That's what those are. And also get all landed into our bank account. Now, up here at the payments with Invoice Ninja, some people pay us via Stripe, some people pay us via PayPal. Those are the two services we're using right here in 2020. And PayPal, I said partial transfers because I'm not covering this as much in depth because it's not relevant, but it does happen. We do pay our bills out of PayPal and our bank account. So yes, we have payroll coming out of our bank account. We have miscellaneous things that we need to buy, parts and whatnot, and those come out of PayPal. And of course, writing vendors checks and paying contractors, et cetera. All that does come out and it's all part of the accounting process. Where does it all land though? This is the second part of it, why it requires two systems. So we grab all the data out of the bank accounts and PayPal. We generally do this monthly, but we can you can do this at a faster interval if it, uh, depending on the number of transactions or just how often you want to keep this up to date. And you can download the QIF file or CSV. Pretty much every major bank account company has a QIF file export. Uh, even PayPal has one or CSV. Um, for a little while, we had to use CSV with PayPal because they were actually having problems with theirs. Um, and it seems to work to find whichever one you choose. QIF, the formatting is just a little bit, I think a little bit easier to manage, but not really a big deal. Um, both work. Then we have this tool here, KMI Money. Now, what we do is all this revenue that came in, and of course, all the money that went back out, has to go into KMI Money with these QIF files. And it has different categories for all of our bank accounts and our PayPal account. And what I'm doing is grabbing this and letting KMI Money auto match. How does it auto match? Well, I'll show that in a little bit in a second, but essentially, if a category such as buying pizza from Pizza Hut goes into our food expense category, it matches on that ledger code. So the first time I buy it, it doesn't have a match. Second time I purchase something, it goes, hey, last time you put this Pizza Hut category into this food category, or if you're refueling a vehicle or whichever paying a contractor, it has each of these categories and it realizes those expenses belong in certain general ledger codes that you define inside of KMI Money. From there, it'll mostly auto match, which means doing my accounting becomes simpler and simpler as it goes on. And I only have to manage by exception, such as when we have new vendors. Many of the vendors are reoccurring, as I imagine for most businesses they are. I have the same reoccurring payments that go out for the company, especially like paying the electric and gas bill, paying for the water bill, etc. Those are all very common expenses that are always recurring. So those automatically get categorized. So it makes it pretty easy to do. Now, once we have all these lined up and into all these ledger categories, we produce a monthly profit loss statement. Now this gives me a snapshot of where my company is. I know whether or not we made money that month. I know if we lost money that month. And I've always said 
the profit and loss is one of the more important ones to me because I care how much money we make. Not exactly how much revenue comes in, but it's the aggregate left over. So you put all the money out and all the money in, what's left over to me is what's important. Because I've seen companies brag about making millions and millions of dollars, but if they're spending more than they're taking in, it doesn't really matter because at the end, your P&L is in the negative. Now, P&Ls, and I've talked about this before, can go in the negative because, especially because we do project-based work, well, sometimes a project may ramp up and we have to put out money for materials and vendors and contractors to get a project started and that check hasn't cleared. And if that split happens, for example, the end of one month and the check clears in the beginning of the next month, well, now we have a what appears to be a loss, but we'll have a big gain in the next month. So that's why when you are using a tool like this, you look at it over time to figure out where you are, like a three-month snapshot, six-month, etc. And that's one of the ways they look at it. Now, the other part is a transaction statement that we produce out of here, and this is how we present it to my accounting firm. The transaction statement tags all the transactions in, out, which way the money went, and it has a general ledger code next to them, and my accountant has my list of GL codes. Therefore, they can match and confirm that I put all the place, put all the expenses in the categories they want. They can look at my profit and loss summary, and what they're doing is I call it the blessing of the books, as in they look at it, they put it on the proper government forms that it goes on, both state and federal, and everything gets paid. Now, to look a little bit at the Key My Money program, I'm going to blur this out and show all the transactions, but we'll filter it real quick. So you kind of get an idea that there's a lot of different vendors and transactions here. There's just so many different things in here. Uh, I'm not going to, like I said, show it in detail, but I will show you Pizza Hut, as I mentioned them. So yes, we buy things from Pizza Hut. And yes, I'm covering up the details of said transaction. But you can see the few times you bought from Pizza Hut, this program, despite having quite a number of years of transactions inside of here, is able to very quickly go through and find all those transactions for Pizza Hut number 262. And if I filter it back out a little bit, you'll see there's a couple other Pizza Huts in there I buy from as well, different Pizza Hut numbers uh, where we've ordered pizza from. Now, what this is doing, and we'll go back over here to the categories, in the ledgers is matching on all of these. So I can go through and this is, I can't show you all the details because I don't wanna give all my detailed transactions away. It could be a security problem, but this is like, you know, eBay auction payment, website payments, web hosting, void of authorization, vehicle expenses, travel expenses, et cetera, et cetera. These are all my general ledger codes. These are all my income codes that come in from money that comes in. Whether it was a PayPal refund, someone paid in the store, uh, certain mobile payments, mass payments is actually PayPal's category for certain commissions that come in and uh, companies like to send those via PayPal. They just call it a mass payment. Then they have some general payments, et cetera, deposits that come in, credit card. And then from here, you know, I have that all broke down in detail, so I'm just doing a matching on all of it. So overall, these two tools are all you really need to have a summary of your month end and everything else. Now, is it gonna produce really fancy balance sheets? Not really, because you need to enter all that information there, and I still leave that part out to my accountants. I trust them to do that. They know how to produce a balance sheet much better than I do. I maintain that the company is profitable. I maintain that we have all the expenses put into the right categories, and then I use an outside accounting firm for it. But a lot of people ask my accounting process, seeing as I don't use QuickBooks, and it's no more complicated than this. All those bills that come in, we pay them as needed. Of course, many of these things are on auto pay. Actually, majority of them, anytime I can, I just set up an auto pay on there and verify when I look at the bill. Yeah, the bill's about right. And things like my you know, electric bill, there's not a lot of wiggle room to argue with them. The same thing with my MSP billing for any of the tools that we buy. For example, we use Solar Winds. The recurring billing with Solar Winds, same thing. We audit it on a per invoice basis. But what this can do is because all the Solar Wind bills are in here, if I see any changes over time, I can dig into it and kind of figure out if there's any flaws. And this is one of the advantages this has because you can produce once you have all the data in here, and this program works very, very fast, as you can see on my laptop here, I'm able to whip up different reports. I can go back and I have over seven years worth of data in this. I can jump back and forth in time, look at trends over the last seven years, summarize any vendor and create custom reports. Okay, my money's a great tool. I have a more in-depth review. I would do a new review of it, but it's a little bit challenging and I haven't had the time to do because in order for me to really give a good review, I like to show how the import process works and how you move the data around in it, but I have to create a bunch of fake transactions to do that because if I showed my real transactions, it would be a security risk because if you knew certain payments at certain times and had all the transaction information, perhaps you maybe would try to spoof being my bank. I don't know. It may be an edge case, but I don't want to really risk any of my finances on here. But I don't mind talking about the process by which we follow because I think some 
some people may find it interesting. This tool is free. Invoice Ninja is open source and free. You do have to pay for the hosting wherever you plan to host it. Uh, but the Key My Money program, if you want to use it even for your personal work, it's free. Um, it's open source and available on both Windows and Linux. I personally use it in Linux. Now it is a local only program, but it does have some options if you ever wanted to instead of having it all stored locally, it does have options to connect it to a SQL instance. Uh, it's got a few backend options. I haven't really played with that feature of it, but it does have some expandability options. It does have some plugins, but I haven't really played with those either, but um, maybe one day I will, but for the most part, I just don't need them because we don't use it to write checks. I will admit we do still write some checks here. Now, the final thing I'll talk about for when it comes to the accounting process that we have is what about individual jobs? Well, we break those down on an individual jo individual job basis, as in we create a spreadsheet and a template that's just really simple where we take all the expenses and all the costs for the job on one side of the sheet and we'll have what we build for and the materials and all of our costing that we sent out the quote in Invoice Ninja, and then we'll do the job and then we can look at an individual project basis. So we still use different spreadsheets. The other nice advantage of having everything in KMI Money and Invoice Ninja is it's really easy for either one of those to export all the data into different CSV or even standard XLS files. Just grab that uh, grab those data files and start manipulating them and do some type of special reports if needed. And I don't have that many special reports. Mostly we look at job profitability on a job by job basis and my overall trends on my profit and loss are the two you know, good indicators that I use for my business. So hopefully someone finds this useful or maybe you don't, I don't know. Leave some comments below or have a more engaging discussion about this over on our forums. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.